All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today it is Wednesday, and you know what that means. Wednesday Wisdom, reading from Dr. Wayne W. Dyer's Wisdom of the Ages, 60 Days to Enlightenment. And what this book really is, is a compilation of Wayne Dyer's extrapolations on a ton of different poets and authors, such as Jalaluddin Rumi, Michelangelo, um, Alexander Pope, Percy Shelley. There's just a huge list of incredible authors and poets in here that have been teaching us through our attempt in reading through this, the wisdom of the ages. Buddha, Lao Tzu, Confucius, Patanjali, um, Zen Proverbs, St. Francis of Assisi, like we said, Rumi, Whew, just a ton of good ones. Khalil Gibran, Walt Whitman, which we just went through uh, last Wednesday. And today will be Lewis Carroll talking about agelessness. Agelessness, ladies and gentlemen. And let's head right to the chapter now. Agelessness from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Father William is what this is named, after South, Southey. Lewis Carroll, who lived 1832 to 1898, was an English author, mathematician, and photographer. Lewis Carroll is most widely known for Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. And so let's read here the part of Father William that Wayne Dyer has chosen for us on this topic of agelessness. You are old, Father William, the young man said, and your hair has become very white. And yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age it is right? In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I feared it might injure the brain. But now that I am perfectly sure I have none, why I do it again and again. You are old, said the youth, as I mentioned before, and have grown most uncommonly fat. <laughs> Yet you turned a back somersault in at the door. Pray, what is the reason for that? In my youth, said the sage, as he shook his gray locks, I kept all my limbs very supple. By the use of this ointment, one shilling the box, allow me to sell you a couple. You're old, said the youth, and your jaws are too weak for anything tough, tougher than suet, S-U-E-T. I never do know how to pronounce that word, but... Continuing, yet you finished the goose with the bones and the beak. Pray, how did you manage to do it? In my youth, said his father, I took to the law and argued each case with my wife. And the muscle, muscular strength which it gave to my jaw has lasted the rest of my life. <laughs> You're old, said the youth. One would hardly suppose that your eye was as steady as ever, yet you balanced an eel on the end of your nose. What made you so awfully clever? I have answered three questions, and that is enough, said his father. Don't give yourself airs. Do you think I can listen all day to such stuff? Be off, or I'll kick you downstairs. <laughs> that was wonderful. <clears throat> Now let's dive right into what Dr. Wayne Dyer has to say about this, about this reading here, this bit from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and, or maybe that's just its own thing called Father William, but Charles L. Dodgson, Wayne Dyer begins, was a shy English mathematician, photographer, and novelist who was deaf in one ear, who spoke with a stammer, never married, yet was fascinated with and loved being around children. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
He was able to speak naturally and easily around children and enjoyed making up stories as he was telling them. He frequently took his young friends on picnics where his imagination created stories of Alice and her underground adventures. He recalled some 25 years after the publication of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, how in a desperate attempt to strike out some new line of fairy lure, I had sent my heroine down a rabbit hole to begin with, without, to begin with, without the least idea what was to happen afterwards. That's interesting. The hobby of telling endlessly provocative stories about a heroine named Alice would eventually become Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And Charles Dodson, who became known as Lewis Carroll, that's very weird, I didn't know that either. <clears throat> One of the best known authors of children's books to this day, this excerpt from that famous story first told in 1862. Um, wow, they rode up the Thames from Oxford to picnic on the riverbank. Today, his stories are read by children and adults the world over. Father William is a humorous ballad depicting a conversation between a son and his father who is perceived, perceived as an old dried up non-entity by the child. Father Williams, you agree, Keely? <laughs> Father Williams' responses sent a twin message to all of us as we face the reality of a body that is aging. And see, this is the point that we're getting at, is this agelessness here. And I was interested to see where Wayne Dyer would go you know, using this kind of direction to go with it. And Father Williams' responses send us a twin message to all of us as we face the reality of a body that is aging, but also houses an ageless soul. These two messages are, number one, you're only old if you believe it, and number two, you can be an expert at whatever you choose. Father William replies to each of the child's questions with a reference to his own youth, which we all know is universally ignored by children, and with a silly and ironic action response as well. <laughs> it was a fun little read. He stands on his head because old age has erased the youthful idea of having a brain that needs to be protected. <laughs> Hilarious. He proclaims, he turns back somersaults, though fat, and he chews bones through his jaw, though his jaws are weak. The beauty of Lewis Carroll's writing is in the irony, in the whimsy. He's telling us all that growing old is a given. And being ridiculed and misunderstood by our younger generations is to be expected yet it ought to have no relevance to how we continue to function in our own lives. Father William's response to the young man is my signal to absolutely refuse to allow an old infirm person to enter my body. He reminds me that I can maintain an attitude of sprightly aliveness and this inner decision will allow me to perform at whatever level I dictate, irrespective of age. I love this advice, Wayne Dyer says, and I also do. I apply it every single day. For over two decades now, Wayne Dyer continues, in fact, almost a quarter of a century, I have told my body that it will go out and run every single day, regardless of whatever ailments it may be experiencing. I have instructed, instructed my body, Wayne Dyer says, to swim in the ocean regularly and to play tennis at least five times a week. Holy cow. I tell it to walk up the stairs whenever possible rather than ride the elevators. I frequently inform my body that it will walk rather than drive to its appointed rounds of chores. 
I tell it to do those sit-ups and abdominal crunches and to play basketball and soccer and what other, other activities my youngsters engage in right alongside them. Not only that, but I remind these same youngsters and their friends. I'm loving this lesson. If you are, let me know in the comment section below. Equal with equal whimsy and lighthearted sarcasm, he lets the youngsters know that I can do it all day without getting tired like they do. <laughs> to their teasing, I say like Father William, do you think I can listen all day to such stuff? Be off or I'll kick you downstairs. <laughs> you do not have to take on an aging attitude with the natural progression of your body's journey through its life stages. You can easily give in and call yourself an old person if you want to. And with that self-label, become an invalid as well as invalid. Or you can take the example of Father William and look your body right smack in the eye to say to it, you're not going to stop me from living fully. And this is sometimes a conversation we have to have with our, our own subconscious mind, the mind that just gives us answers without us giving the answers <clears throat> and we so often think that that part of us is all of us and we don't recognize that there's another part of us that can tell that subconscious mind that you know like you're not going to stop me subconscious mind from living fully i'm gonna go do it whether you think crazy things or not and it comes down to a belief I don't have much room to speak on this topic. That's why we're going to go through this one quickly and succinctly so that the message can be nicely delivered to you without going on to 39 or 40 minutes like we normally do. I thought it might be nice to give you a good short one, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the second message Wayne Dyer says that he gleans from Father William's nonsensical responses to his young son's inquiries is that it is unnecessary to limit ourselves to one area of expertise. Hmm, that's such a great, I've always been somebody who likes to be a, a jack of all, not a master of one, but each of us are different. And so it's like you can be, you can be outstanding both as an intellectual and as an athlete, even though many consider these polar opposites, I've long heard Wayne Dyer says that there are great writers and there are great speakers, but it is not possible to be great at both. Wayne Dyer certainly changed the game on that one, ladies and gentlemen. And it is, it is my desire to one day be great at both. And that's what I'm practicing right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen. We're not writing, but we're reading great writings, great wisdom of the ages. And we're working on our you know, speaking ability at the same exact time. And so if you're getting value, smash the like button and consider subscribing because we normally do a lot more extrapolation on these ideas. Wayne Dyer continues, these observers have told me that writers are introverted and communicate with words and paper, while speakers are extroverts who communicate with people and therefore are not generally talented in writing. I see this as just a nonsensical, just as nonsensical as Father William saw his son's inquiries. And I chose to do both, just as I know that I can choose to enjoy listening to classical music and watching a football game, or even playing in one. The contrast there being interesting, classical music and watching a football game. <laughs> now, he continues by saying, um, or even playing, you can love poetry as well as romantic novels. Those aren't very different, but you can be just as much at home on a virtual reality ride at Disney World as you are in a discussion group on existentialism. Uh-oh, storage space running low. We better hurry up, ladies and gentlemen. But that's quite a difference too. 
Disney World, and then a discussion about existentialism. There are no compartments that you have to stuff yourself into is the key goal, the key lesson here, where we want to get to in order to know ourselves. And remember, always talking about, I believe it's Socrates, know thyself, ladies and gentlemen, and begin to work on that. You do not need to find out what your innate interest is and then pursue one or two areas that are commensurate with your God-given talents. That sounds exactly like what I thought you needed to do, but maybe it's different than that. You need to find, there are no compartments you have to stuff yourself into in order to find yourself. You can enjoy a high level of expertise in virtually any area of pursuit that you decide on. You are an ex ex electric, E-C-L-E-C-T-I-C, -E -E interesting, a select, eclectic, ah. rather than a one-dimensional being. So I get, I'm guessing what he's saying is that you can be multifaceted rather than being one-dimensional. As you hear the question to put, put to you by those wise, cracking youths who see you as a dried up and limited inabilities and all these other things. Keep mind on Father William, Wayne Dyer says, the feisty character that Charles L. Dodgson, AKA Lewis Carroll, created from his widely imaginative mind, who responds by standing on his head, balancing an eel on the end of his nose and doing somersaults while good-naturedly sending his young critic away and telling him, don't give yourself airs, be off, or I'll kick you downstairs. I suggest that you literally kick downstairs any and all attitudes. Attitudes, ladies and gentlemen, we need to get rid of the wrong ones. Any and all beliefs and attitudes that we may have been cultivating or that you have already adopted, which identify yourself as a limited and aging body. To get this process started, Wayne Dyer says, I suggest you do these four things. Number one, talk to your body and force it to become more attractive despite its objections. If you have accustomed your body to living as a couch potato, it will resist walking and running and being dragged through exercise routines. Not note those protests protests and then do it anyway ladies and gentlemen start walking for one minute if you need to i mean that's usually it takes one minute to get from the kitchen back to the couch so maybe a little more than one minute but you know where i'm going ladies and gentlemen <laughs> number two resist impulses to label yourself this is really key with descriptions that limit you in any way statements such as I'm not good at, or I've never been interested in, or only serve to strengthen your, the, these labels, <clears throat> like, oh, I just can't do that. I'm too tired to do that. You know, there's, even though we may be too tired, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we can push ourselves a little further than we thought in a good way without harming ourselves. And so these negative statements that we, describe ourselves and label ourselves with only serve to strengthen our self image of limitation. You can be good at and enjoy anything if you decide to. Number three, put yourself through a self-improvement project that is designed to maximize your state of mind, your body and spirit and write your own personal curriculum and apply it each day. Now this probably sounds like a lot of work to people, but this is the wisdom of the ages, and this wisdom will change our lives. Number four, take classes in something new or unfamiliar, such as archery, bridge, yoga, meditation, tai chi, tennis, dancing, or anything that you have never experienced before. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a simple yet very interesting way to talk about agelessness. 
coming from the wisdom of the ages, from Lewis Carroll, or what was his other name? Charles Dodgson. It's just a fascinating one. I didn't expect it, but it's hard for me to expect these. Next week's looks like one of the topics that I really like to talk, talk about, which is kindness. Oh, and it's one of my favorite Native American poems, I believe anyways. Maybe it's different. I heard this from, a, um, from Scott Allen Roberts or Scotty Roberts on his show that he does, the Intrepid Radio Program. And he was talking about the, um, the time period of the 1800s here in the Americas. And he used this poem called, Do Not Weep Maiden for War is Kind, talking about kindness. And that one should be so fascinating next week, ladies and gentlemen, on Wednesday Wisdom, where we're learning the wisdom of the ages and attempting to apply it into our lives so that way we can reach a much higher quality of life and in turn lift up the quality of the lives of those around us and who we encounter in our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, continue to seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment. Seek to discover the hidden wisdom of the ages and seek to make happiness the way. Because if happiness is the way, then the destination that we've always been striving for becomes irrelevant. And we're already where we want it to be, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. I really appreciate and love everybody. But even especially those of you who spend time here with me and with Dr. Wayne Dyer and all the wonderful authors and poets included in the wisdom of the ages. And with that said, we'll be back next week with more Tuesday Dow and wisdom of the ages to bring your way. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Stay good. Na -na -na -na.